Hey, James. How are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fine, you know. I mean, we're we're just uh, going by the day, I guess. Exactly. That's what we do here. Yeah. And tell me how how I've heard good things about 2020 in Bordeaux. Um, it's quite mixed. Um, uh -huh. where we are in front of, of a vintage which is um, which is not the, the typical 18, for example, vintage uh, uh, where everyone was was good. Um, in uh, in 2020, uh, in some areas there has been more rain than in, in some yeah. others. Uh, there has been hail storms, very uh, uh, powerful ones. There has been a, a little bit of frost. There has been a huge mildew pressure. So oh my God, the, again, the, the people who have managed it actually even stronger than 2018. And so the the, the people who have managed to go through the spring. And and reach the summer, produce some good to very good wines. Okay. But but uh, uh, the 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 road to get there was was very very complicated. Because I heard uh, that also after around the thirtieth there was a lot of rain. The thirtieth of September. The thirtieth of, of September or yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, we there. There were quite strong uh, um, rainstorms, but again, it was storms. You know. Ah, um, okay. I give you an example. Uh, the amount of rain in Merignac, so the airport of Bordeaux, yeah. which you know well, um, yeah. was uh, one thousand three hundred millimeters on the year. In Pomerol, it's eight hundred and fifty-seven. Wow, big difference. Yeah. So it's a huge gap. Um, so, so that's why it's 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 very it's very difficult to, to generalize the, the 2020 vintage, as as everything this year. I I am afraid to say. I mean, well, that's uh, actually, yeah, you're so right. I that's just crazy. I didn't I didn't realize it was so crazy in Bordeaux too. I mean, not quite as crazy as Napa, but still. Mother Nature is angry, you know. Oof, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was unstable. It was punishing. Oh my God. Okay. Well, anyways, I'm sure you made some good things despite that. No, we're 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 quite happy. We're, we 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 already have started to taste, of course. Uh, as you know, we we usually work on the blend a little uh, later because we mm -hmm. we wait for uh, three months in, in barrel, uh, uh, a racking time, uh, before looking at all the lots. But uh, yesterday morning, I tasted a few with a uh, with a team from from Monange, and it's I think it will be quite interesting. Um, uh, uh, it's because we've had uh, an amazing uh, uh, lack of water during the the, the summer, uh, uh, but there's still, and I'm sure that's what you've heard from other producers, there's still quite a lot of freshness in the in in, in the wines. Um, that's what I heard. So it's good. a it's it's a good uh, it's a good balance, and it's in a sense it's what we find in the 18s as well. Um, you, you have the ripeness, but it was a gentle ripeness, and and therefore the the there's there, there's a freshness that remains in the in, in the wines and and helps the the, the vivability the, the drinkability. Totally, that's so that that was my impression from I've tasted about uh, 300, 350 wines already in bottle. And um, it's interesting because when you taste the wines, if you just taste it very lightly and you're, oh, it's really, they're very like drinkable and fruity and nice. But then if you take more wine and you start, all of a sudden all the tannins come out. So it's exactly. a pretty, it's very structured wine, but at the same time, you know, you, um, you can appreciate it now. Like it's really enjoyable. You wouldn't want to drink it. But I, I, yesterday I gave some friends um, at the wine bar. You can see I'm in the wine bar now. Yes, I, cool. I, gave some, I gave some customers some wine, the Angelus um, 18. And it was crazy. They were going, wow, it's so delicious already. And even though it has huge tannins. So that's really one of the beautiful things about the 18, isn't it? It, it is, and as as you know, uh, um, we like to 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 define the, the wines of Bordeaux around the tannins. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, th there are some regions where it's the fruit that 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 is the main uh, the, the, the the element that dominates the wine. In in Bordeaux, the, the quality of a vintage can be defined by by its tannins and the shape of the tannins. 
Mm. And, and since we've had such a, a perfect year with its difficulty, of course, but uh, 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 weather-wise, um, the tannins are perfectly ripe. Uh, um, and, and therefore, there's no angles in the tannins. So they are there, they are present. They, they, the extractability was very high. Mm -hmm. So without uh, 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 running strong extractions, uh, you, you know us, we are very light-handed on the mm -hmm. extractions, uh, but they were just coming at, uh, immediately. And so the, the tannins are present, but they are, they are soft and round. So, so they're, 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 it's the perfect backbone because they, 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 you, you don't notice them, you see. How do you think that happened? Because it, you know, it was a very difficult growing season uh, uh, with mildew. You had a lot of rain until uh, June, then it was dry in the summer. Uh, you know, how did it happen? I mean, this nice, you know, that, this that's, beautiful that's ripeness. That's where the terroir will make the difference. Um, well, yes, we had a lot of rain before, but we had um, a very, uh, um, a very cold month of February and March as well, which was good, uh, um, uh, um, which which allowed the, the the bud break to be quite late. The bud break was early April instead of of, of uh, third or fourth week of, of March. Um, um, and, and then, in fact, the, the difficulty was, was the warmth that arrived in May, uh, um, uh, and end of May and early June, and that's when the, the, the mildew pressure really exploded. But that's part of our job, if, if I may say. Uh, it's never easy to produce wine. If it was, uh, uh, we would know it. Is there another older vintage you compare it to, you and your dad? Hello. Um, it's always difficult to compare, yeah. as, as, as you know. Um, the, the element, the key element I haven't mentioned yet for, for, for 2018, mm -hmm. it's the insulation, the amount of sun that we had. Okay, ah. so I, I, have a, I have a list here, which uh, uh, is unreadable. Um, <laughs> but the, the insulation between June and September in 2018 was 1,000, 140 hours okay um and the last time we we had something that came close to that was 1990 uh -huh. and before that it was 1964. Uh, how interesting okay yeah it's it's actually a very yeah. in, interesting element um and then if you go if you look at the at, at those numbers i have since 1949 until 2019 um the, the, if you go a, a, a little further and, and you look at all the vintages that had over a thousand hours of, of insulation between June and September. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's oh, the amount of sunlight. During that's the, the amount day. Of, of sunlight. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you have 49, 54, 62, 64. Then you have 89, 90. Oh. 2009, 2010, 2015, 2018, 2019. Uh, uh, oh. So I, I, I almost, without, uh, I mean, with the exception of uh, 1982, I named all the great vintages yeah. of, of, of the past 50 years. Particularly right see, bank, though, 64. That's, that's, that's for yeah, us. Right that's bank, yeah. yeah, for yeah. you guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's um, really cool. So that's that's a, a very interesting data, um, and and therefore, if we were to compare it in a completely different uh, uh, um, style of viticulture, it would be 1990. Yeah. Wow, that's really significant. And and you you were talking about the the, the how you can enjoy those wines today. Yeah. 1990 has always been a very generous vintage, You're and right. it was so generous that the English and you remember very well uh, yeah. uh, were claiming that it would never last because it, it, it yeah. was too good at, at the beginning. And now yeah. the 90s are, are fascinating Fantastic. wines, yeah. and particularly right bank, and particularly uh, right bank yeah. and, and Pomona. Yeah. yeah. Great. Let's um. Let's try the Bel Air, which I thought yes. was fantastic. Do, or do you want to do Palm Royal first? What do you want to do? As you wish. We, we uh, can start let, with Bel Air. Yeah, what, what's what interesting think. with those three wines, um, it's we have uh, the, the three different type of soils of Saint Emilion and Palm Royal. Bel Air Monange, so uh, um, limestone dominating with clay on on the slopes. Then we have La Fleur Petrus with, with gravel 
over an underground of clay. And then we have Trotanois, which is highly dominated by, by clay. And so we, we really have the, 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 the way the three wines will, will react, you see? I mean, the, yeah, the so wines the will react on those, on those three terroirs. What I like about this wine is the uh, the seamless tannins that just blend into the wine. It's very powerful, but at the same time, those tannins just blend in nicely, and they're so polished and long. In exactly. fact, I hadn't I hadn't thought about it. I'm going to taste it against the 15, but it's very oh. close. Yeah, it's very close, very close to quality. Yeah, it's and um, but I'm excited by that, and it. Also, what's interesting about the the eighteen is, I'd say in general though, it's very aromatic, very yes. complex. It's not just ripe fruit. It's like you know, there's soubois, black olive. All the wines are like that. Even the most simple Eau Medoc or um, Montagne Saint Mignon. It's very complex in the nose. Exactly, exactly. What, what's interesting in this wine as well is the minerality. Oh, and yeah. Sometimes the minerality of limestone can be a little, uh, a little chalky, which is not yeah. very pleasant on, on the palate. And here it, it's more minerality uh, um, with the acidity. So you have a, it brings yeah. a tension in the wine. Uh, uh, we were talking about freshness before. You have, as you just said, the, 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 the freshness in the, in the aromatic complexity, which is due to the, the patience of very long harvest. Um, and, and, and a very slow mat maturity of, 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 of the fruit. Um, but, but there you have another element of, of freshness. Um, you can taste that there's quite a few young vines as well, uh, because that's, that softness, that, uh, it's almost like a baby fat, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yet the wine is very powerful, but if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't pay attention to it, you can drink it, which is exactly. quite typical of the saint of this area. Yeah. You just drink it without thinking about it. Thinking. Exactly. I found that uh, uh, often when I'm tasting, I'm really thinking, I'm like, oh, this is really light. Oh, it's really delicious. And then like, hold on. But I taste it again. Then the tannins come exactly. out. Exactly. Exactly. Let's try the, uh, the La Fleur Petrus. Alors, La Fleur Petrus dominated by gravels, as you know. The nose is, is much darker. Uh, um, yeah. we, we are uh, on, on black fruits. There's a little bit of licorice. Totally, I, get, I got that. There's a... Um, earlier on, there was a hint of, of violet, which, which yes. I, I don't find right now. I get more it's, it's the, very perfumed. Yeah, chocolate, coffee. There's even some pine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's almost uh, south of France. Yeah. We're in Pomerol there. There is that 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 fat, the fatness in the wine that sort of enrobes your mouth. It, you don't have the minerality that we had. It's not. No. It, 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 it's not a question of tension. It's a question of of suavity. It's velvety, while silky at the same time. It's a yeah. refined velvet, not not the, the big, uh, the, the sort of rough one. Um, no, no, but it's quite muscular. This, it's like really formed muscles to it. Exactly, and there's a depth. So there's, I, I mentioned the young vines at Belair Monange. For, for Pomerol, one of the key elements of the 2018 vintage were the old vines. And both oh, Trotanois okay. and, and, and La Fleur Petrus and Osana, which we don't have today, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a few parcels of very old vines. And they have brought a tremendous complexity in the wine because in a vintage when everything happens so slowly, the old vines have the maturity, have the history, have the root system to actually bring the, the fruit to another level. The young vines, they want to go fast. They're excited. It's like a kid. Uh, uh, so they, 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 don't, they don't allow the fruit to go to that extra level of, of, of complexity. And here, for both the, the wines, La Fleur Petrus and Trotanois, it's obvious. There is a, a certain, um, in French, we say sagesse. Um, what is sagesse? Suggest like a like an an, an old uh, an old Buddhist uh, monk. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you, you, you see, uh, <coughs> um, he, he would be. It's uh, there. There is a uh, there. There is a sense of of history uh, uh, and time in in those wines. Okay, let's try the traditional. Oh, 
Alors, trottinois ar aromatically is much more intense. Um, yes. On the nose, there's a hint of new oak, which you don't have in the, in the two previous ones, which had been fully digested. Uh, it's not yet digested because there's so much tannins naturally, of course, in, in, the, in the wines of Trotanois that the, the, uh, the, the, the tannins of the oak are, are still a, a, a little obvious at this stage. Yeah, I, agree. I said that again. ripe with wood now, but fresh. And there's, there's but the it's vibe. very transparent. The, the aromas, yeah, I, yeah, lavender, violet. I said it reminded me of the two thousand nine, yeah, but probably better, yeah, because it, it has more structure, a little bit more tannin structure. Yeah. And the nine has more of that opulent fruit. And what an exactly. amazing wine! There, there's there's more acidity in the in the in the in the eighteen than than the nine as well. Um, uh, okay, but, good. I didn't know that. But this is a hundred percent Merlot, and that's where I'm. I'm oh my big, god! This is a hundred percent Merlot. That's a hundred percent yeah. Merlot, and and. Merlot is a, is a great variety that, de that deserves a lot of attention. But when you get it right, it's an unbelievable great variety, especially in Pomol. I mean, there's very few places in the world where you can have such complexity. And I hate that term, but almost yeah. perfection. It's everything but perfect. But it's, it's, there, there is that sense of, uh, of, of perfect balance between all the elements. You have the freshness. You, don't, you didn't need Cabernet Franc to bring freshness. It's there. Uh, you have the aromatic complexity. You have the balance. The tannins are there, of course. Uh, um, and yet, if, for such a young Trotanois, going back to what we were saying before, it's very drinkable. I mean, it's 9 a.m. for me. I've been drinking those wines uh, yeah. thanks to you. It's great breakfast. No. Um, <laughs> so but it's, uh, it's, it's very easy to, 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 to enjoy. At Trotanois, since around, around 2009, 2010, the quality is really... Yeah. But when did you do the second one? Uh, oh, oh nine, oh nine. Uh, the, oh, okay, the parcels, the, the parcels that were going into uh, in that are going into the second wine were not going into Trotanois. Yeah, they oh, were just okay. Being classified. So, but it's it, the the vineyard is in a fantastic shape. Um, uh, you guys are just there, incredible. There, there is there is you know it's a very simple vineyard. There's five parcels, so it's very easy to to get it wrong, and sometimes we get it right. Uh, out of those five parcels, there's two that go into the second one and three that go into Trotanois. It's as simple as okay. that. So it's the easiest blend, but it's very easy to fail. Yeah. Because there, there, there's no room for failure. You know? Failure, yeah, you um, really got to get it right. And, and there's one of the three parcels that, were, that are old vines that were not in a very good shape. And um, in, in 2008, actually, the Oi Trotanois are, are delicious at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, we decided, instead of pulling it out, we decided to give it uh, uh, one more chance. And we redid the entire palissage. So we pulled out all the wires, all the... The, um, the, 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 the posts. The pique, the post, thank yeah. you. Uh -huh. um, and we redid everything in order to, to fully adapt to the, the canopy, the shape of the canopy of, of the vines of such an age. And, and by doing that, the, the, that parcel exploded. And in 2020, it's the best parcel of the three. Um, and, and so that's, that's, that's those old vines, which before were a little too rustic. They were going into the blend, but they were very rustic. Uh, uh, hence the, 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 the difficulty to approach the, the, the wines of Trotanois uh, when they were young. Uh, um, the rusticity has been digested uh, um, and, 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 and now it's, 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 pure, it's pure depth and, and power, you know. Amazing. I, one thing that I, probably a lot of people will be interested to know, like this, these wines are, are truly fantastic. And everyone always talked about 2019. And so like 18, I don't know if people are going to forget about 18 or they forgot a little bit because everyone was so, including myself, was so excited about the 19. But these wines are amazing. Like, what do you say when they, when people says, say to you, well, is 19 
better than 18? Like, what do you do? How do you reply? Well, we reply, drink both. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, of course. <laughs> but um, they are very different. The 19s are a little more austere. Um, the, they are not as generous as 18. Uh, um, it's, it's a beautiful construction, uh, uh, 19. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, a little bit like the, the Sol Lewitt that I have behind, behind me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very geometric. Yeah. Uh, um, but uh, the, the 18, uh, and, and, and you, you said it yourself comparing to 09 and me comparing to 90, they have that generosity yeah. that is not geometric. You know, yeah, uh, um, and and it's it's a question of physical uh, uh, um, uh, physical reflection in this case. Yeah, they're um, more bur- um, sort of baroque. And exactly, sort of just, exactly. Yeah, I love. Um, I mean, really, I'm having a ball tasting these wines. I'm sure. I'm sure. Three hundred and fifty. That's that's quite cool. So far, <laughs> I have like another six hundred to get through. So, wow. So, anyway, you can travel. <laughs> yeah, luckily I, I'm not jet lagged. So, but listen, Lord, thank you so much for the uh, for the Zoom call and the tasting together. And it was Hello, really, pleasure. thank you. Yeah, it was really fun, and and I love your enthusiasm about the vintage, and and you made some fabulous wines. The you know thank all you. three are great, and the Trottenau is out of this world. So, thanks thank again. you very much. Thank you. Try my best, Thanks everyone. for the opportunity, and, and please say hi to, uh, to Mari for me. Yeah, say hi to Kelly. I will. Thank you. Merci. Ciao. A bientôt. A bientôt. Merci.